So today I'm going to talk about the John Deere Toe Behind uh, Drop Spreader Aerator Combo. Um, this is a pretty cool little toe behind tool. Um, one thing that I did not like was using a push behind spreader, a uh, broadcast spreader. I had one of these. It is the Scott's uh, DLX, something like that. Um, and basically the problem I had with it was I was overlapping too much and I ended up getting striping in my yard um, of where I was getting too much fertilizer in some areas and not as much in others. And to some people it probably wouldn't be a problem, but I did not like it. I could not stand it and uh, I just for whatever reason had a hard time fixing it. Um, part of the problem might have been that I was putting the full application amount down, um, going only one direction rather than cutting it in half and um, doing, you know, a crisscross pattern through the yard. Um, so that was probably my fault, really. Um, but on the other hand, I also wanted to be able to aerate my yard. Now, this is a spike aerator. Um, from everything I can tell, plug aerators are better because they actually take a bit of the ground out. Um, so that nutrients and water can better get into the ground. Um, the spike aerator will do it, just not quite as efficiently. Um, and then one unfortunate thing with this is that it is not driven by the wheels. Um, the actual dropping feature is driven by the spike times uh, actually spinning. Um, it uses this set of tines on the end here, um, and then these other sets are all independent. So really, the two over here are the ones that are driving it. Now, it's actually chain driven, which is pretty cool. Uh, I noticed that during the assembly, I kind of took a peek inside of this little uh, housing over here just to see how it was. Now, the lawn sweepers, they use a metal and plastic gear um, in order to drive the brushes that turn to kick up material into the hopper. Um, but this being chain driven is a good thing to see. Um, that tells me that uh, durability wise, it's gonna be a lot better for this uh, over time, um, especially if you're dropping any kind of heavy materials. Um, there's basically just like a metal impeller in here that'll spin around and uh, you know cycle that material around to get it to drop. If you have a lot of heavy material inside of here, that's gonna have a hard time moving around. It's gonna need, you know, there's gonna be a lot of stress behind it. So having a chain, having a chain, you know, wrapping halfway around that gear, that's a lot more surface area to contact. And uh, overall, I think it'll just be, you know, better in the long run. So I'll be excited to see how that works out. <clears throat> now, I did do an assembly uh, video on this. Um, when I started editing it though, uh, I was really only done with like putting the wheels on the axles and then like assembling the hitch assembly. And by that point, I was already at like 15 going on 20 minutes. I don't know what was taking forever. Uh, it just, it was becoming a very, very long video. And I, I didn't want to break it into multiple parts. Um, I want to try to get away from doing multiple parts for things. Um, so I just decided to not upload that um, and then just mention it in this video. So if you are looking for a how-to on how to assemble this or you're assembling it and you're having a problem, um, let me know. I'm keeping all that footage. I'll have it um, so I can you know, send it to you and you know, show you exactly what I did for whatever step. Um, so that is that. Uh, the build on this wasn't too bad, but I did run into some problems. One of the problems I had was the a whole tow bar assembly um, was not wide enough for the hopper. So I had to do some prying and pounding and uh, loosening of the bolts up here in order to get the sides on um, and then tighten everything back up. It was kind of a nightmare, um, but eventually I did get it. Um, then the other problem I had was getting this side of the wheels on. So. Um, this piece over here and then the other side along with the bar on the back of this that you can't see right now um, are two different pieces and you have to hammer them together. Um, it's pretty tight, especially since it's painted and the paint's, you know, pretty thick. Um, you got to hammer them together and then there's a bolt that goes through it. Before you do that, there is a countersunk bolt that goes 
on this side and you need to have that in before you hammer it on. It fell out in the process, but I thought, oh, that'll be fine because I can move these wheels enough that I'll be able to slide it back in, you know, before I'm all done. Wrong. Uh, that actually has to be in there the whole time. If it falls out, you need to put it back in right away or you're gonna have problems. Um, so once I got that on, I had to then take that axle piece back off and it was just another nightmare. So just be cautious of that when you're putting this together. Um, I'm trying to think, I feel like I had one more problem, but I can't remember. Oh, not so much a problem, just something to be aware of. These, these tines are very sharp. Um, so when you're assembling this, I would definitely recommend wearing pants, um, hard toe shoes if you have them, or you know, definitely boots. I was wearing boots, thankfully, but uh, this thing can get swinging around, um, and if you're not careful, I mean, that can run into your leg or your foot, and it can mess you up. So be careful of those tines. Um, other than that, uh, trying to think some specifications so the hopper can hold 75 pounds of material so quite a bit there um, and then this weight tray is removable um, this can also hold uh, 75 pounds um, it is big enough that you can fit a John Deere quick catch weight or you know whatever other 40 pound or so suitcase weight you want on there or a cinder block you know whatever else you want to use for weight um, if need be. Um, this lever is what adjusts how much material is dropped at a time. Um, you have settings all the way from, well, zero basically, all the way up to it has 18 labeled. Um, you can go, I want to say a little bit higher than that. If I look here, well, there's a stop here and that won't really let you go much higher than 18 maybe like 18 and a half, but realistically looking down in there, it doesn't really open any further. So it goes up to about 18. Um, I'm gonna do another video to show how I'm gonna calculate what setting I'm gonna use for this. Um, but again, that'll be in a different video. Um, but yeah, uh, this lever of course lifts and lowers the implement. So right now it's in the you know, it's, it's towing position mode, and then you have two settings here for how deep you want the tines to go into the ground. There's, um, there's a minimal um, setting, and then a setting that gets them deeper into the ground. So depending on what you wanna do, um, you can set them differently. One thing I don't like about this is the fact that anytime you do want to spread material, you have to be digging into the ground with those tines. Um, I'm hoping one day that I might be able to come up with something that I can do in order to make that so that I don't have to be always aerating the ground. Um, it probably won't really hurt the ground too much, um, especially up here as well as everything grows. Um, it shouldn't be too much of a problem, but uh, I'd rather not be aerating the ground every time. But then again, if you're only putting some fertilizer on once a month or so, um, you know, that really probably won't be a problem. So, uh, I think that's all about all I have for now. Um, no, it does have steel rims with, uh, pneumatic tires. So that's nice. Um, overall metal quality. I always talk about that. Um, uh, it's built heavy, all the metal's nice and thick, you know, minus the sheet metal for the hopper, of course, but of course the shape of it makes it nice and strong and sturdy. So, but everything else seems like it should hold up. This is definitely a nice piece. Um, I think I'm gonna like this over a broadcast spreader um, any day. So we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted on how it works. I'll get video whenever I use it. And uh, as I said, I'm also gonna do a video to show how I'm gonna adjust what setting I use and you know determine which setting I'm gonna need for the material I'm dropping. So uh, if you have any questions, of course, let me know um, about this tow behind tool and uh, I'll get back to you with them. But uh, other than that, thanks for watching. Have a good one.